Adam Lambert, welcome to Chicago. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Early morning for you? Early morning, but you know what? It's beautiful out. The sun is shining. Yes. I'm getting to meet lovely shining faces, and <laughs> yeah, it's a good day. So things are good. Yeah. You know, the first thing I want to ask you, um, you know, coming from American Idol, um, I've always found that the people who don't actually win tend to find more success than the actual winners. Like Kelly and Carrie who won? No, they won. Which I'm ones? Saying, who are you talking I'm, about? But I'm talking about you. I'm talking about Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. I, mean, you, so I think it's, it's a mixed bag, you I know? Think, isn't it getting on there and getting the exposure? Yeah, and it's it really comes down to I think what you do after. Like mm-hmm. you, you like Idol is a great platform to get you on the map and mm-hmm. to introduce you to people and to establish what you do. And then it's you know, then it's a whole other ball game. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about Idol being canceled? I think they had a good run. I, I think do it too. was I think it was a really good run. I mean, what is it? 12 10 I think it 11 was years, 12? 12. I mean, that's season. it'll go down in history as like a major TV moment. You, you think know? it was time though? Do you think it was yeah, time? Yeah, all on? good things come to an end. Like right. even our favorite sitcoms have to end, you know? No, they I don't. mean, <laughs> syndication. <laughs> Maybe Idol will be in syndication. Yeah. No, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. they do. I was just curious as to what yeah. you think because everybody, you know, the day that it was announced, we yeah, were like, oh, crazy. Oh my god, American Idol it's going away. Yeah. So, but it's been amazing, you know, think about what it's done for the industry. And it it's interesting because it came out at a time where I think as a country, we really needed something to like bring us together and to mm-hmm. give us hope. It was right after 9-11. Right, right. And, it, you know, the format of the show is like it was so new. We didn't have anything like that up until that point. So it really launched a lot of other shows, you know. It did. And it really sort of changed the face of the music industry Definitely. in the sense that. People could actually go someplace and show their talents, showcase their talents, get, uh, you know, critiqued. Yeah. Where before it was, you know, someone in a studio putting together back then a record or a CD mm-hmm. and then having to shop it on their own. So yeah, in a it lot t- of ways, changed the opportunity for sure. And I yeah. think, too, it like it changed the way that the, the artist interacts with fans because mm-hmm. it gave fans so much more power. You know, the fans are the ones voting. Oh, yeah. And yeah. up until that point, we didn't really have that type of system in place. And now it's, you know, I think fans have more power than they've ever had. Which is, I think, really cool. I mean, and, yeah. and, and then with the whole social media, there's much more interaction between artists and yeah. fans. And, and the year that I was on Twitter, or on, on Idol, Twitter had just started. Uh-huh. And imagine, imagine life before Twitter. No. I mean, it changed no. everything in the media. You yeah, know? it really has. Yeah, so. It has a lot. Um, you know, speaking of opportunities that you've gotten from the Exposure Vital, tell me about Glee. What was it like being on Glee? That was cool. Um, you know, they called me and, and made an offer. I was just like, really? Yeah. I would love to yeah. do that. I didn't really have that much going on at the time. And um, I it was so funny because I went on to set the first day and mm-hmm. I I, had, I was kind of nervous. And I was like, why do I feel? Oh, right. I didn't audition. <laughs> so I was kind of like, well, I'm flattered that they asked me, but what if I get on set and I suck? Like, what if... What if all of a sudden, like, they're like, cut, uh, Adam, uh, oof, uh, we're going to take all your lines away. <laughs> you know, like, I didn't know what was going to happen. Right. So I was a little nervous, but then I got through the first day and I felt a lot better. And, and then I did five episodes. So what was it like? I, I was I, I haven't watched the show in a long time, but I was a huge Leah Michelle fan. And a huge She's so cor- talented. I loved Corey Monteith. Too. Yeah. And that was a that was kind of it was really sad because that had just happened. Yeah, they told me that I was going to be doing the show, and then he passed away like that weekend. So you, it was the timing of it was, was really, yeah, and it, it was, it was a little somber on set mm-hmm. for sure. And I heard stories that he was just the nicest guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah. was a very unfortunate really sad. Yeah. situation. And the other thing I have to ask you about, which I think is just like the coolest thing ever, you and Queen. Yeah. How I mean, how did they, it, it? You know, after after it was an announced, after you did your first couple of shows. It seemed like such a no-brainer. I mean, you would never think that there could be Queen without Freddie Mercury. And it was, you know, it was a long time in the making too, though, because obviously I, I auditioned with Bohemian Rhapsody on Idol, mm-hmm. and then performed with them on the finale of Idol. Right. So that kind of kicked it all off. That was the first time meeting them, and then uh, about a year later, I did the MTV European Music Awards with them. They were getting right. an achievement award, and I did like a medley with them. So that was like the first time doing it kind of on our own. Uh huh. And then a while after that, we did some shows in Eastern Europe and London, and that was growing. And mm-hmm. I look back on those shows, and they were strong, but they weren't quite there yet. Okay. And then two years ago, I guess it was now, I, I don't know what my timeline is anymore, but <laughs> we were in Vegas for the iHeartRadio. They had like a big concert thing. Right. 
And we did that, and it was it, all of a sudden it really clicked in. Mm-hmm. It clicked in on that Vegas concert, and and it felt like really organic all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And we all looked at each other afterwards, and we we're like, that was like that felt really natural. Nice. Like there wasn't any thought, like thinking. It wasn't like any nerves. It just was fun. It was easy. It, it was fun. It felt yeah. like real, you know. And and um, that's when we started talking about putting together like a full on world tour, mm-hmm. and we did. And so this year, over sixty some odd shows. All over the world. It was crazy. Yeah. So you're still involved with that as well as your solo career. So you got both going on. Yeah. I mean, you know, as like as a creative person, as a performer, it's you don't need to do just one thing. I mean, it's more fun to kind of like, you know, go and do different projects, you know, Mm -hmm. the Glee thing, the Queen thing. And now I'm back to doing my my solo work. Right. And I was working on that kind of intermittently throughout the, the touring process. So it was great. So Ghost Town was um, out in April. Yeah, really yeah, a couple weeks ago, yeah. And and that's been going well for you? Yeah, and... it's I, people are loving it, and it's I'm hearing it on the radio, which is really exciting, yeah. and, and people are dancing to it. And, and one of the things that I love so much about Ghost Town is that it feels like it's authentic. It feels like it's me, and, and what I love is that I'm getting, like, text messages from, from acquaintances where I live in L.A. or in mm-hmm. New York, People that I interact with in my real social life that are yeah. that are that are texting me going, oh, my God, this song. It's like totally speaking to me, you know, so it's really exciting because I know I know my fans have been like waited on like bated breath for the single. Uh-huh. And I was so excited to have, have the fans respond to it. But then to have people that I interact with in my quote unquote real life. Right. Right. Also love it. It, it makes me feel really good. Is it still um, do you still get that sort of like. I can't even imagine because I, I, I'm tone deaf, so you'd never hear me on the radio singing. But do you still get that sort of rush when you hear yeah. your own song on the yeah. radio? Yeah, it's Just, definitely a high. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I bet. I can't even imagine. I bet it'd be really cool. Like, <laughs> Whoa, that's me. Especially when it's all starting. Like, this song is just now starting yeah. to kind of, like, permeate and... Yeah, it's really exciting. I was I was in New York the other night, and we got into a car going to a like a an event, and it was on the radio. I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's on the radio!" Yeah. So we have all these these fans of yours in here in the studio today. It's um, very I intimate wanna... in here. We're all here. Hello. I know. Hi. I've Hi, everybody. Done this Hi. Um, and I wanna I wanna open up and and let them ask some questions. But I do have one fan question that I want to ask you. Yeah. Um, what's the craziest fan interaction? experience that you've ever had you had there's been a few wild ones (laughs) i've told this story a couple times but i I was at a charity event in new york and i had performed and i was leaving the stage door and i get into like my my uh my guy that was helping me organize everything like takes me to the car he's like okay here's the car and i get in the seat and there were some fans and i waved and Mm -hmm. you know signed a couple autographs and got in the in the car and in the opposite seat in the back there was a woman sitting in there <laughs> and she was there. it was really creepy because she wasn't looking at me she was looking straight ahead like as if like if I don't make eye contact with him I'm not here <laughs> it was really weird yeah and she just kind of stared like very still and I looked over and I'm like hi <laughs> like who is that and I'm thinking right. like, who the hell is that and and she didn't look she didn't look she didn't look up she just kept staring at the seat in front of her like and I think she was mumbling something and I looked back and I said uh I think there's somebody else in here is this my car? <laughs> right. And then and then someone ran around. I was like, "You have to get out of here." And she just kind of went, "Okay." And just like drifted out. It was it was so slick. I actually had a lot of respect for her. I mean, it was like really ballsy to just jump in the car. And pretty well thought out. Like I mean, really stealth. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. then again, if she's this huge fan and she wanted to see you, she never even said anything to you, right? Well, I think she was hoping that the door was going to shut. We were going to drive off into the sunset. Got it. And and get married or something. Right. I don't know. I mean, it was pretty brave. Uh, Gotta yeah, say, that's really bizarre. Though. It was weird. It was weird. The, like the the like, I'm not gonna look at him, and right. then he won't know I'm here. Right. Thing was hilarious. To me. <laughs> yeah. So, anyone else in here? Do you guys have any questions for Adam? If you do, don't be shy. That's why you're here, right? That's right. <laughs> it's good to meet you. Yeah, officially. Um, so, obviously, I think you're really talented, and Thanks. you do. Um, you're just very artistic and personable, and I think that's fantastic that you've maintain that through your career so far so outside of music what do you do for fun like what are some of your other hobbies um, I don't really have any other hobbies really except shopping maybe which is also an addiction um, do you have a dog I don't have a dog I would have a dog if I were around more because um, I really like dogs but um, I'm pretty normal uh, it, relatively speaking you know like I, I hang out with my friends and 
go to restaurants and eat good, get di- go to dinner with friends, go out to clubs, go to the movies. During the day in L.A. lately, I've been trying to be, like, more active. So I, like, most days that I have off, like, I'll try to go and do something like a workout or a hike or something like that. Yeah. Well, Pretty you look normal. great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So if there was one song you could take to an island, if you were all by yourself and you would never leave, which one would it be? Oh, good question. Um, Like, like only song that I could hear over and over again. The only one? Yes. That's a big question. I know. That's that's intense. That's intense. <laughs> um, God, I don't know. Maybe, maybe "Wicked Games" by Chris Isaac. <gasps> Especially on the island, like on the beach, yeah, it kind of feels like the video. Like I'd be like shimmying up palm trees for coconuts while I was like, <laughs> uh, you know. Will you do any more theater? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure something will come up at some point um, if it's the right thing at the right time. I'm, I'm open to that. I mean, na- right now I'm definitely focusing on music um, and, you know, maybe more film camera stuff at, at some point. I'd like to do that, too. You said more film? Yeah, I'd love to oh, do more of it. Me. Besides, yeah, like okay. that kind of got my feet wet. It was interesting. It was definitely a, like I learned a lot. Yeah. And I want to learn more about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, you know, it's I like doing new things. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all about novelty and like. What's next? What's different? What's the next new thing? That'd be good. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having it's me. It's been a thrill, and I've loved having all of you guys in here. I've never had this many people in the studio before. We'll so do it again. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually in here I'll by myself. <laughs> yeah.